Live. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome everybody this afternoon on Tuesday, September the 7th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. for our regular city council meeting. We've got our prayer with uh, Tarika Walker, our pledge with Vincent Bradford. I'd like everybody to silence your cell phone and council members, will you please turn on your mics. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing us to come together again another day. I ask and pray that you touch each and everyone's mind, helping them to make the best decisions that are good for all citizens amending. These many blessings I ask in your son, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item A on our agenda this afternoon is to adopt the minutes for the council regular session on August the 2nd, 2021. The council special session held on August the 19th, 2021, and the council special session held on August the 25th, 2021. Do so moved. Motion made by Mr. Edwards. Seconded. Seconded by Ms. Pam Block. Some do we have any discussion? There being no discussion, cast your ballot, please. Motion passes. Item B on the agenda is to appoint a city clerk. I move to appoint Karen Walker as city clerk for the city of Minden who will serve through December 31st of 2022. Motion is made by Ms. Pam Bloxham. Second. Seconded by Mr. Michael Roy. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, cast your vote, please. Motion passes unanimously. Item C is personnel is to adopt a new employee position and job description. I believe you have all that in your packet. Do I have a motion? I move to adopt the new job description and department position entitled City Clerk Accounting Assistant in Department 8 as presented. Motion is made by Mr. Michael Roy. Second. Seconded by Mr. Wayne Edwards. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I got a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Floyd, has this position already been filled? No, sir. Is there any more discussion? There being no more discussion, would you cast your vote, please? Motion passes. Item D. On the agenda is to adopt the resolution adopting the amended city budget for 2021-2022. I move to adopt the budget with recommendation that the council workshop be held to discuss fire and police raises to determine the source of funding for a future budget amendment within 60 days, if possible. Motion is made by Mr. Michael Roy. I'll second that. Seconded by, by Ms. Pam Bloxham. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, if you're cast your vote, please. The city budget fails. Item E. 
on your agenda is to adopt a resolution that we do annually for the uh, Minden Airport Improvement Funding. And this is uh, for the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. Division of Aviation provides funds required to complete the airport improvements at the Minden Airport, specifically as described in the Capital Improvement Program application for state financial assistance dated August the 25th, 2021. Do I have a motion for this, please? I move to adopt the resolution requesting that the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development, Louisiana DOTD, Division of Aviation, provide funds required to complete the airport improvements at the Minden Airport, specifically as described in the Capital Improvement Program application for state financial assistance dated August 25th, 2021, as presented. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Wayne Edwards. It's seconded by Mr. Michael Roy. Do we have any questions? There being no questions, if you'll cast your vote, please. Uh, first A. Passes unanimously. Item F on your agenda is to adopt a resolution supplementing the administrative policies and procedures to include a write-off policy for uncollectibles and receivables. Do I have a motion? I move to adopt a resolution supplementing the administrative policies and procedures to include a write-off policy for uncollectible or receivable as presented. I have a motion made by Mr. Wayne Edwards. Seconded by Mr. Vincent Bradford. Do we have any discussions? Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions for Mr. Fleur. First of all, uh, can you tell me what is outstanding at the current time on our books? Do you know? Uh, no. Okay. Second question I have is if we adopt this resolution and that we're showing our uncollectibles, um, is that going to affect our rating when we, if we go for a new bond for the city of Minden? Not to my knowledge. Uh, the city of Minden, even with the last bond we received, had uncollectibles. Okay. Uh, I don't see that it has any influence. Okay. All right. Specific, Thank you. Specifically, since the uncollectibles are um, getting lower and lower every year. Okay, thank you. Is there any more uh, discussion? If you'll cast your vote, please. Motion passes. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, may I also make the comment, the procedure which is described in the right of policy is not new. That's standard procedure we use for the last mm -hmm. 10 years, but due to applications for grant money and so on, more and more day-to-day uh, -day operation needs to be put on paper to document that we have policies and procedures in place. Okay. That's the reason for to bring it up to the council. Okay. Thank you. Item G on the agenda is to authorize the mayor to request a proposal for a new solid waste removal and disposal contract. Most of you know our contract expires the end of December with Republic, so we need to go ahead and get this out for proposal. Do I have a motion? I move to authorize the mayor to <clears throat> request proposals for a new solid waste removal and dispose of contract and negotiate the same for the city of Minden. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Uh, Roy, seconded by Ms. Walker. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, would you cast your vote, please? Item I. Yes, I'm sorry. Adam, Adam H on your agenda. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. 
Item eight, shown on the agenda is a cooperative endeavor agreement with the state of Louisiana for $75,000 uh, funding for the animal shelter. Do I have a motion for that? I move to enter into a corporate endeavor agreement with the state of Louisiana for grant funds for the relocation and rehab of the Menden Animal Shelter and authorize the mayor to sign all documents pertaining thereto as presented. Second. Motion is made by Ms. Bloxham, seconded by Mr. Roy. <clears throat> is there any discussion? Yeah, I have a comment. Yes, sir. Uh, over the past week, after receiving the agenda, I had the opportunity to talk to several people in the district. And those people I represent, I got a responsibility to support their wishes. So I'll be voting their wishes. So what would be the location for this new um, animal shelter? Well, the location, we're talking about the grant right now for $75,000. We've got a potential location on Talton Street which is the old wildlife and fisheries building. Right there close to Phillips, the school. Yes, ma'am. If you looked at the the, uh, the rendering that you have in your packet. I understand. I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew where the location, sure. the potential location would be. Sure. That you want to relocate an animal shelter next to a school. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That I just, I don't well, see it's not. Difference. You know, there's a wooded area between there, but with the, did you see the, the sally port that it had where the truck would pull in, doors would go down, so there's. And, I, and it's this, okay. it's next to the pre-K kindergarten school. Yes, it, yeah. it's a building we're trying to utilize. Okay. Mayor, I thought that Mr. Woodfork had a comment to make on this issue. He, is he back, is Mr. Yeah, Woodfork back there yes. to make a decision? Can someone get him? So while he's coming forward, what's the reason for wanting to relocate the animal shelter? It's in a really bad location and if we're gonna have an adoption program and enlarge the space because it's so small, we need, we need more space. So you just can't renovate that one to give you more space? We don't have the space down there to renovate it with the, with the dump that's being down there. And that's just my opinion. What I'm trying to do is get this and endeavor proof we can lock down the $75,000 grant for a new animal shelter. We can change our mind where we're going to put it anytime. Yes, sir. Mr. Woodfork, would you state your name and your address, please, sir? My name is Larry Woodfork, and my address is Simo Sun Plum, Menden, Louisiana. Um, Mr. Mayor, you have a new project. This is not on the agenda, Ms. Walker. Don't, uh, please don't set me down because it's not on the agenda. But Pastor Leland told me to, to make a statement for him. Pastor Leland said that you need to consider the budget because he don't want the governor to, to take over. That's, that's what he told me to say. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you want a dog pound or a place for dogs? An uh, animal the, shelter, yes, sir. Okay, and you want to put it on Talton? Yes, sir. I'm against it because in that, we moved in that neighborhood, we had a problem. We had a cesspool there. That city kept up for years, inhaling and exhaling the waste. Then the city, back in 1950s and the 40s, uh, they dumped all the garbage over where the dog shelter, they put all the garbage over there in that neighborhood. Now you want to put a dog pound right by a school system. I'm against that because what I'm, uh, the plan is good called Council, Council Member uh, Everson showed me the plan, it looked better than that. But I think that he should stay where, 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 it, where it lo the reason the location because there's a school there, you don't see no animal shelter around, no school across town. You know, uh, uh, animal shelter most would be like it, like it is now, or it's a nice place outside of the box and not around the school. My question to you, they put dogs down, and they, they, they have to, when they get too many, they 
put them, put them down. Now, I know that they, sh they used to shoot them years ago. I don't know how they do it now. But that tell me, but, but do you think that cross-contamination was set up when you take a dog down? What well, you don't do, you don't drop it, you, you don't burn them right there, or how, I don't know how y'all do it. But years ago, they used to have that incinerator down in, in your park that they burn them up. So you have to, so you have to consider the source that, that that neighborhood is outside of the box. His 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 his, his, his not. I live there. It's disconnected. It seems like we're living on an island. It seems like that the neighborhood is not considered being a city at all. But though you beautify and make the city look nice, you never think about doing anything about that neighborhood, but putting a dog shelter in it. I have a problem with it. I think the dog shelter should be in your neighborhood. You know, you have enough ground over there for it to go down and not over in that particular neighborhood. Consider putting it somewhere else. Probably, probably in your neighborhood would be fine. You know, that, you know there's enough ground out there to hold those, those animals. So that's my statement. Appreciate, we're, appreciate your time. We're here this afternoon to discuss not exactly where the animal shelter's going, but we're here to discuss that the state has committed to give us $75,000 and they can read in their agenda where it says to improve or relocate the animal shelter. We are not moving the crematory. The crematory stay in there. But what we're just gonna do is remove, it's not a dog pound, it's gonna be an animal shelter where we adopt out dogs. Adopt out dogs, and where you plan on putting it at? They say you don't put it at the old wildlife center. Near the school that's center. my location of choice. Well, that's the wrong show. That's, I, I, hate to, I voted for you, but that's I understand, the wrong, but that's the wrong show. That's what I'm saying. That's my location. But what we're here to decide this afternoon is to whether or not to accept the $75,000 grant so we don't lose that free money. Okay. That's what we're here for. Not to ch decide on the location. But like I said, that was just my choice. Okay then. Well, uh, well his honor, uh, we should uh, we should work as a city, and we should expect the responsibility of the whole city, and not just over on that okay. side. Cause we have enough problem in that neighborhood already. Thank you for your time. Appreciate Thank you, it. Mr. Woodford. Do we have any more discussion? There being no more discussion, if you cast your vote, please. Okay, the $75,000 grant fails. I, on your agenda, is to engage with our annual audit that's required by the state and an accounting firm to conduct our annual audit. This firm of Allen, Green, and Williamson LLP has proposed fees for the single audit that will not exceed $77,000 for the year ending September 30th, 2021, and $78,800 for the year ending September 30th, 2022. It's my recommendation that the council approve the engagement of Allen, Green, and Williamson LLP for the fiscal year 2022, 2021, and 2021 and 2022. Do I have a motion? I move to, the, to approve the engagement of Allen, Green, and Williamson LLP to conduct our annual audit for fiscal year 2020, 21, and 2020, 21, and 22. Okay, I have a motion made by Mr. Wayne Edwards. Second. Seconded by Ms. Pam Bloxham. Is there any discussion on that? I guess I don't <clears throat> quite understand why we even bother with this because this is all a mute point in my opinion. I mean, we should have started discussing things a long time ago when it comes to the budget. So I, I don't understand why we're even worrying with this, honestly, Mayor. You know, it, it's a mute point. This council has decided to let the state come in and take control. I think that's pretty sad. Yeah. So, wait, wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. <clears throat> since we're on this discussion, but since we're on this discussion, I have no guys to say. Putting it out there. Not true. Mayor, may I have an opportunity to speak? Yes, sir. You have the floor right now. I called uh, Karen White at LMN LMA, Louisiana Lou Municipal Association, to find out exactly what happened when we don't pass the budget. 
If you take the opportunity to Google it online, everybody on Google or Twitter looking at something, let's look at some facts. They detail in our state legislation on a municipal government for budgeting exactly what happened. We use 50% of our budget during that period. And I asked her at any time, do the state actually come in? She said, only if you have a deficit. So what we have, we got from now, at least six months or a year, depending on how long that money lasts, to make a decision on this budget. I'm hoping that we can come to a compromise before we get there. And everybody wants to say what the state say. Do we have an additional comment? No, I'm done. No, sir. <clears throat> I disagree with what was said. Well, we disagree with what you said. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I would suggest that everybody look at what the state says, the Louisiana Municipal Association. And after we spend 50% of the budget, that's it. And you can go out there and read it for yourself. That's it. After we speak after we spend 50%. There's no, no more money to pay for things. With that said, let's vote on item I. Did someone second it? I did. Oh. <clears throat> Motion passes. Item J, Budget and Financial Report for July 2021. Mr. Michael Fleur. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have three points to make tonight. First of all, you received the budget report for the month of July which shows the adjusted figures adjusted by the last audit. So you can say you have a clean sheet and the clean sheet shows that in the general fund at the moment we show a deficit as well as in the water and electric fund we're going to show a deficit. We hope and uh, I don't know what takes the state so long to distribute their money. Uh, we are still waiting on the 2.1 million to come in. Um, we double checked this afternoon all the bank accounts. The money has not been transferred yet. Uh, if the money would come in, that would clearly um, eliminate the deficit in the water and electric <coughs> fund. The sales tax fund shows a surplus as expected in this uh, um, mentioned every month that we are over the budgeted amount. The same thing happened this month. The sales tax for the month of July was collected $628,180. Previous year, 537,479. Uh, it's an increase of about roughly 17 percent. Budgeted amount, 512,000. So we are clearly 115,000 above the budgeted amount. Uh, cash in the bank, which is the third point. The end of July, the bank accounts, including the um, investments and savings, showed 17.29 million. The previous months, we had 16.66 million. And the previous year, we had 18.12 million. These are mainly the figures. Um, we 
If you're going to look, there are several uh, amendments to be made in the budget. For an example, there was uh, currently some money in for the solar station, which is not uh, will not take place this year, but that was money transferred coming out from a different fund. So several amendments need to be made before uh, the end or after the end of the year, we usually make the amendments. Um, if you're going to look a little bit deeper in the general fund, specifically on the revenue side, we are 6% behind the budget itself, what we expected. And on the water and electric side, it's even higher. Um, there we are in the double digits, so about, I believe, um, one second, let me double check, uh, about 15% behind the budgeted amount. Um, um, the reason for that is the usage uh, of electricity and water is not as high as usually expected. These are all the figures I have for tonight nothing else to to mention so if you have any questions please feel free to ask go ahead okay mr floor yes, you say that uh the state is dragging its feet about giving us our 2.1 million dollars and that's from the covid legislation is that correct it's called the american rescue, rescue plan. plan okay correct. So uh, what concerns me about this is that on the next ballot, the legislature is asking us to turn all of our taxes over to Baton Rouge and let them disperse them all as one. Is that correct? Uh, I believe I read that. That's the way that I interpret it. And, yeah. that's, and so what, what I'm worried about is that if we don't get our $2.1 million off of this, which they obviously already have, yeah. what's going to ensure us to vote for that legislation that's going to tell us that, yes, we're going to get the money that we send to Baton Rouge that's ours already? I'm, I'm not in favor of a centralized collecting okay. agency. Okay. I prefer the way how it is. Uh, specifically also on the sales tax right. that the sales tax commission uh, it's a, a better contact you have if you're gonna if you can deal locally so to right. speak um, we followed up we did all the the requirements we applied for we sent in the budget the base for the application like I said uh, August the 4th, we received the message the funds were appropriated in two payments, each payment $2.189 million. Okay. So uh, we look every day. Um, I don't know who to call specifically at the moment with uh, the hurricane going through, and it seems like everything is shut down. Right. There. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And we checked is on the checking accounts this afternoon, the money's still not there. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Fleur. Chief Copper, would you give us your report, please, sir? Good evening, everyone. Uh, month of July, we collected $12,025 in city fines, $390 went to the crime lab, $450.50 went to city court. $420 went to the marshal's office, 100, or excuse me, $615 went to the engine defender's office, $28 to the clerk's fund, $105 to the ware center, $22 to the uh, Louisiana Commission on Law Enforcement, $167 to the off-duty witness fees, $42 to the court case management information system, $55 to the court case management, oh, excuse me, to the loot, excuse me, Louisiana Traumatic Head and Spinal Cord Injury Trust Fund, $140 to the ju Judicial Building Fund, $5.50 to the Judicial Education Fund, totaling $14,465. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Michael Roy. 
second. Seconded by Mr. Wayne Edwards. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, would you cast your vote, please? Motion passes. Would you give us your oral report, please, sir? Uh, the month of August, we, uh, the Menden, city of Menden Police Department worked 34 accidents, uh, including one four vehicle accident. And on the same day, we had three three car accidents. Uh, we, we had 830 calls for service. 80 warrants were issued. 52 warrants were served. Uh, 112 citations were issued. We actually generated 142 incident reports, and on the STEP program, there was 124 citations issued, and 98 citations were paid. I mean, 98. And that's all I have. Anybody have any questions of the chief? You said how many calls for service? 893. I'm, I'm sorry. How many calls for service? Uh, 830. Do you have those broken down by district? I no, not just for the month. I don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Item L on the agenda is the uh, recognition of the 2021 Minden Sweeties All Stars. They were 2021 district champions, 2021 Louisiana state champions, 2021 third place World Series, and 2021 World Series Sportsman Awards winner. And if we could have uh, Mr. Aguilar, and we will bring the young people in for their recognition certificate. when they come in to make them feel like a million bucks. All right, well, uh, first off, I'm Logan Hollingsworth. Um, I was our all-star coach. We were the 6U Sweeties. Uh, and this is in, this is most of them. I think we got three or four out. But um, so what we did, we had our, uh, <clears throat> we had our little district tournament, went and played at uh, Ruston, got beat there. Then we had our state tournament down at uh, Alexandria. And we won it, which was a big deal to these girls because it's 6U, but we got four, five, and six-year-olds. So that was a really big accomplishment. And um, then we went to the World Series in Alexandria, won one game and got beat twice by uh, Tennessee. So we got third place, which was another big accomplishment. Um, but probably the, the biggest thing was the time with these girls, these coaches, the parents. It was just a great experience and <clears throat> at the World Series they give a sportsmanship award to the team that showed the most sportsmanship for each division and we did we did win that so that was huge that that was a big win for me and the coaches and I know the parents so uh, but it was just a, a great experience I definitely think we represented Minden not only the state but Minden um, we had people calling us wanting to come play with us next year and all that good stuff so 
I don't really know what else, but <clears throat> this is my little team and my parents and great support group. We appreciate Minden. I know that uh, that y'all gave gifts to give to people. That was huge. Just the support from Mike and all of them too made it a great experience and definitely looking forward to next year. So there it is. <clears throat> Okay. All right. We got Miss Adley Igo. Come here, Adley. Miss Lake and Highland Twelve. Miss Lake and Lewis. Miss Marley Bogues. Stella Perriman. Right. Three, two, one. Oh, beautiful. All right. And Miss Aubrey Chandler. Appreciate it. I Before you leave, could you call the names of the girls that's not here so that they can be recognized? Uh, Miss Harper Barnett, Miss uh, Olivia Crawford, uh, Lexi Perriman, yeah, Annabelle Sunderland. Oh, and uh, Conley Jernigan. There's refreshments out there for the, the kids, cookies and, and Cokes. Okay, we're going to go down to the public comments, please. When each uh, 
Jason, would you put that platform and the speaker in the center, please, sir? And if, if you'll state your name and, and your address. My name's Jason Smith. Um, I'm a Minden police officer. I live outside the city. Um, I'm the chairman of the Minden Civil Service Board and president of the Minden Police Association. I want to speak to you tonight about the crisis uh, that the Minden Police Department and our town are facing. Minden police officers need a raise. However, this is not a pay issue. Yes, your Minden police officers live below the poverty line and deserve to be paid for their service and sacrifice. But this is an officer safety and a community safety issue. Due to low pay, multiple officers have left Minden and went to agencies that value their service more than $13.75 an hour. We cannot replace those good officers that we paid to train with this low starting pay. We are down one third of our officers, all from patrol. This means at any given time, there are one to three officers on the street patrolling and protecting our city. Statistics from 2019 to 2021 show that because of the officer shortage, the average officer response time has increased by 20%. That means if two officers are working a bad wreck on Homer Road and there's a shooting on East Street, it could triple or double the amount of time for one officer to get there, which would allow the shooter to escape. Many times over the past year, one officer has been sent into a dangerous and violent situation without backup because there was nobody else to send. Situations like this have led to multiple officers receiving serious injuries over the course of last year. Studies have shown that officer presence in high crime areas will reduce crime. More officers mean policing policies such as proactive policing and community policing will reduce crime. Right now, officers are going from call to call working 12, 14, and in some cases 16 hour shifts. And this is the current situation in Minden. It's no secret that Minden has had a rough year. Arrests are up 7%, shots, are up, shots fired are up 122%. Illegal weapons violations are up 154%. Drug violations are up 195%. Burglaries and thefts are up 24% and assault and batteries are up 42%. Multiple children have been tragically and brutally murdered in Minden this year. It should not be acceptable for parents to bury their children, especially under such terrible yet preventable circumstances. Right. Short staff Minden police officers are working long hours to diligently solve and prevent these crimes. They have done a fantastic job, but they need help. We need more officers. The only way to bring new or post-certified officers to, it, to Minden is to increase our starting pay. Police officers will not come to Minden and work for less than they can make stocking shelves at Walmart. We are asking for an 18.25% pay increase. That will bring our starting pay up from $13.75 an hour to $16.25 an hour. I ask, this council, uh, I ask this council to stop political infighting and come together for the safety of our city. This is literally a life and death situation. Give officers the raise they need to support their families and give officers the tools they need to fight crime in our city. We need your leadership now more than ever. Now is the time to come together as one. Also, I would like to personally thank the mayor and Mr. Roy for your tireless efforts and working towards a solution. I personally know that Mr. Roy has gone, gone above and beyond the call of duty for Minden first responders and I really do appreciate that. Now I ask that the citizens that came here come and tell the city council that you need officers to protect you. That's all I got. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Do we have any other public comments? If you'll give us your name and your address, please, ma'am. Ashley Turner, 1097 Methodist Camp Road. We just saw a bunch of smiling little faces of little girls up here. And I bet if you asked them what was more important, an animal shelter being by their school or bullets by their head, right. they'd have an opinion. Right. I bet their mamas and daddies would care too. I love that you're passionate about where the animal shelter goes and if it's by Phillips. But let's be passionate about their lives. That's what I'm asking you today. I'm asking that you put your money where your mouth is. You want to clap for these little girls? Congratulations. You want a baseball game? How about you protect their lives? That's what I think is important. 
I'm asking, I'm begging as a parent of a child who goes to school here, who lives every day here, protect my baby, protect your babies. They need your help. They cannot do it with one, two, three officers at a time. I know I could go on and on, but I am prayerfully asking you to consider, and I understand 50% of the budget might take six months, a year. I get that. But these lives, these babies, that little three-year-old, that, that little 15-year-old that died outside a lamplighter, they don't have six months to a year for y'all to decide what to do with this budget in these raises. These kids are dead. Never to come back. Please stop. Please stop and give the officers what they need. Please, I'm praying for each and every one of you. I'm praying that you have the discernment to do what is right. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address, please, sir. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Joel Kendrick, live at 1100 Victory Drive. I'm also the vice president of the Men and Police Association. I'd like to tell you all about the hardest thing I've ever had to do. The hardest thing I've ever had to do, and I've had to do it three times in the last two months, is to tell a mother, grandmother, aunt, uncle, that their child is gone. I've had to watch the life fade out of three young lives in the past two months. I watched these three children die. I have to live with that. I have to go home and try to sleep. I have to go take my, my problems to the Lord because I can't handle this on my own. Especially when I know that if there were more of us out there that we could cover more ground at one time that we could possibly have prevented this. And until you sit there and you stare at a mother and watch her crumple to the floor and scream in terror because she will never get to hold her child again, you will not know the tragedy that we face every day. Statistically, it is proven that an average individual will encounter one and a half to two critical incidents in their lifetime. The average police officer in their 20-year career will, will see over 800 critical incidents. 800. 400 times what the normal person would see. We deal with a lot. And with us being shorthanded, you're piling more and more and more of it on the ones of us that are dedicated enough to stay here. Paul Harvey said it best. 1968, he wrote an article. It was posted on his column in the ABC News Network and he read it over the radio. It was so impressive that the FBI law enforcement bulletin picked it up and broadcasted it nationwide to every law enforcement officer. He said, a policeman is a composite of what all men are, I guess, a mingling of saint and sinner, dust and deity. Cold statistics wave the fan over the stinkers and underscore instances of dishonesty and brutality because they're news. What that really means is that that's exceptional. It's unusual and it's not commonplace. Buried under all the froth is the fact that less than one half of 1% of policemen misfit their uniform and that's a better average than you'll find among preachers. What's a policeman? He's, he of all men is at once the most needed and yet the most hated. A strangely nameless creature who served to his face and pig or even worse to his back. He must be such a diplomat that he can settle differences between individuals so that both of them think they want. But if a policeman is neat, he's conceited. If he's careless, he's a bum. If he's pleasant, he's a flirt, and if not, he's a grouch or other words that I can't repeat here. He must make split-second split decisions which would require months for a lawyer to make. But if he hurries, he's careless. If he's deliberate, he's lazy. 
He must be first to an accident, infallible with a diagnosis, and he must be able to start breathing, stop bleeding, tie splints, and above all else, be sure the victim goes home without a limp or expect to be sued. Police officer must know every gun, how to draw on the run and hit where it doesn't hurt. He must be able to whip two men twice his size with, at half his age without damaging his uniform or considered being brutal. If you hit him, he's a coward. If he hits you, he's a bully. A policeman must know everything and not tell. He must know where all the sin is and not partake. And he must, from a single human hair, be able to describe the crime, the weapon, the criminal, and tell you where he's hiding. If he catches the criminal, though, they tell him he's lucky. If he doesn't catch him, he's an idiot. If he gets promoted, he has political pull. If he doesn't, it's because he's stupid. Policemen must chase bum leads to a dead end, stake out 10 nights to tag one witness, and I'm going to emphasize this, who saw what happened but refuses to remember. He runs files and writes reports so his eyes ache to build a case against some felon who'll probably get dealed out by a shameless Seamus or an honorable who isn't quite so honorable. Policemen must be a minister, a social worker, a diplomat, a tough guy, and a gentleman. But of course, most of all, he's going to have to be a genius because he's got to feed a family on a policeman's salary. Thank you. <clears throat> you give us your name and your address, please, ma'am. My name is Jamie Lewis, 1102 Rathbun Street. Um, I am a teacher in the area where most of the crime is happening. Um, I teach second grade and if you look at what's happened in the recent months, the crime's happening in an area where it's preschoolers to third graders. Most of the time, if statistics show that if you reach these children at an early age, that crime goes down. We do not have police officer um, presence in those schools. Why? Because we don't have enough officers. Um, the first time that they actually see an officer and interact with an officer is at Webster Junior High. By the time they're 12, 13, 14, 15, it's too late. They're very much impression to which way they're going to go. So in order for us to be able to meet those needs of a young child and show them that police officers are there to help, we've got to have more police officers in the area. And in order to do that, we've got to have raises for them so that they'll want to come here and we'll also have to be able to compensate them so that they'll want to stay. I know that in the past years we'll get new officers and they only stay a year. We pay for their academy and they go somewhere else. Why? Because they don't want to stay here and get paid minimum wage when they can go and stock shelves at Dollar General and Walmart. I wouldn't stand in front of a bullet for minimum wage and I know you wouldn't either. So in order for us to make an impression on the young minds, we need more police officers in that area. I can't tell you how many times I can see a police car drive by during the school day and it's because they're understaffed, because they're going to calls. They don't have time to patrol the area. And I would like to see more of police patrol in that area to buffer the fact that children are intimidated by police. Well, they don't get to see them in a positive light because they're always running to a call. So we need your help and support in voting for a raise for our police officers and our first responders. Thank you. <coughs> what school do you teach at? I'm at J.L. Jones. J.L. Jones, okay, yes, thank, sir. thank you. you give us your name and your address? I'm Charlotte Jones, 1300 Broadway. I'm director of UCAP. I just wanted to present another side of the police department that a lot of people may not know. When you have stranded motorists, or you have people sleeping on park benches or in the cemeteries, or people that are discharged from the hospital and don't have any place to go, they contact us or somebody else to try to find them some assistance. We may, you know, they may get them a night at a hotel just till they can keep going. But this is a humane side of the police department that not everybody sees. And I just want to bring that out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You'll give us your name and your address, uh, couple. Harper Edwards. Um, I live on Drew Lane. I've had to call on the. Uh, men in police department three times in the last three years 
unfortunately, or rather not have to, but I got a chance to meet some of the officers and, and I was really impressed with professionalism uh, and how courteous they are. Very good follow-up. Uh, we're really lucky to have the ones we have. Uh, not only do we need to be pushing for pay increases for this group uh, to draw new officers in, we need to be taking care of the ones we have. We're lucky to have them. Thank you. Thank you. Here, give us your name and address, please, sir. My name is Brian McLaughlin. It's 808 Claiborne. I just want to say, you know, he explained how these guys' job is. Everybody feels like their job's important. Everybody feels like their job's hard. These guys put their life on the lines every day. They took an oath. They don't get to say no. When you call, when I call, when they call, they got to show up. That's your front line. If you can't pay them, why are you getting paid? You ain't showing up. You ain't doing your job. Half the time we come to a city council meeting, we can't even come to an agreement. These guys, these guys got to come to a shooting. They don't get to say no. They don't get to say, hey, wait a minute. You know, let's back up, make a plan. They got to show up and do it right then, right now. Come save our life. If that ain't worth the money, what is? That's all I got to say to you. Thank you. Here, give me your name and address, please, sir. Yes, sir. John Carruth. My business is Ace Hardware, 807 Homer Road. Um, there's been a lot of emotional pleas here. I, I just would like to appeal to you as a business person in the community. Um, I know most of you are business people, and this is a business decision. And in your personal business, as in mine, sometimes when there's a moment of crisis and there's critical decisions to be made, we have to make hard decisions, whether we want to or not. And it may not be, we may not win in that decision, we may not get everything we want in that decision, but we have to, go there, to come together for the sake of compromise. Um, these men and women in, in uniform have been in my business multiple times. Uh, there's been times when COVID first hit that, <clears throat> excuse me, we were limiting the number of people in the store. It was just different times. And I know we were paying them more per hour more than double per hour than what the start and pay is here. So they can work off duty for me and make twice what they're making while they're on duty working for the city, not being a fearful of, of getting shot at Hope, you know, not in front of a store. But it's a business decision. Your business people come together, not win or lose. Let's do what's right in a time of crisis. We make hard decisions and we do whatever we have to do to get the job done to serve this community. I'm not perfect. I know I don't do that perfectly in my business, but it's what I strive to do is make hard decisions, do whatever I have to do so that this community is served well. And I would just ask you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, give me your name and address, please, ma'am. My name is Lisa Weissel. You can pull that down if you want to. My name is Lisa Weissel. I live at 9068 Highway 80, out in the parish. I work at the local hotel here in town. Been working here since 2001. Been into my home. Been here 40 years. We've had several instances at the hotel where we needed the men and police. And they were always prompt and good at coming to help with the issue. Sometimes it was just somebody needed to be sent away. Sometimes once or twice, it has involved suspicion of children being in danger. Whether you're aware of it or not, 20 is a very hot corridor of child abduction and crazy people doing bad things to kids. We need police. What affects the city of Minden affects us in the parish. We need police officers. You live in town. You got friends. You need help, you call. We need help too. Please take care of the people that protect you and us. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll give me your name and address, please, ma'am. Gladys Nelson, 1011 Brenda Circle. And Regina and I, we live in the same neighborhood. 
I've heard all the statements made by the citizens of Minden, and I'm making an appeal to this council that we need to find some money somewhere to give our police officers a raise. We, we don't ever see the police because they're busy doing other things. We want to see them patrol our neighborhoods. Right. It's a lot of children have lost their lives, and it's really heartbreaking. It could have been my grandchild or anybody that's in here. I'm, I know that we can find some money somewhere because if you don't pay a decent salary, you're not going to be able to invite anybody to come to Minna to be a police officer. So I'm making an appeal. Uh, I worked on a job for 37 and a half years at one job for 25 and a half years. I made a good salary. I'm retired now. And we live in a retired neighborhood. And we want to see our officers patrolling our neighborhood. And when, when we sit and do nothing, evil is going to prevail. So we're going to have to do something. And she's with me 100%. We're yeah. speaking for the Brenda Circle area and the whole town of Mendon. I'm 100% in favor of these officers getting a decent salary. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> You'll come up and give me your name and address, Ms. Martin. Absolutely. Jody Martin, 415 East and West, Minden. I just want to say I am a local business owner here, and I appreciate and, and enjoy the honor of serving our police force. I know many of them by name, and I'm so grateful that we have them. You know, as a local business owner, I, it's not important for me how much my paycheck is. I'm busting my rear to make sure that my girls, single moms that work for me, have a good life. And if I have to take a little bit of a reduction so that they can have a little bit more, I'm happy to do it. But I want to remind you of something else, because my business is not just for serving food. My business is a ministry. There's many people that walk in my business every day that are not just there for food. They get prayed for. And so I'm going to take it to a spiritual side for you for one second. It says we're going to give an account before the Lord one day. Right. We're going to give account for what we did in the body, whether good or bad. So that's not just talking about your physical body. That's talking about your church body. That's talking about your body as running the city. So let me say this. Do not have blood on your hands because you made a delay in making a decision. You'll have to answer for it. You will, whether you like it or not. We're held accountable for every word. So I'm imploring you to put the stuff down and make a good decision that will bless them because in turn it's going to bless your community. We were known as the friendliest city, guys. We were. Now, what are we known for? Come on. Live it up. Be who we're supposed to be. Be the town that we were created and called to be. And give these men and these women what they deserve. Don't leave it on the city to do it. Don't leave it on the us. Because if you make the individuals do it, I promise you, there's a group of us restaurants that will get together and we'll hold a fundraiser and we'll raise some money. And we'll give it to them ourselves. But do you want to be known for that? Or do you want to be known that you stepped up and did something? All right? That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll give us your name and your address. CJ Cheatham. I live at 300 Phillips Street. Um, not only do I live inside the city limits, but I work at the police department. Um, I feel like I should speak on behalf of all the officers, our dispatchers. Um, we're in desperate need for officers, more officers. Um, they are pulled in many different directions every day. Um, one day we might have two officers on the street. We have wrecks that they have to go to. We have shootings that we get called to. We don't have enough officers to be pulled in every direction that they need to go. Our chief, uh, I mean, he gets stressed. I see this. He's not going to tell you this, but I see this. I see all of these guys struggling. And they, they definitely need something to look forward to. They need uh, compensation. Their families let them come to work every day. And my own husband does this. Um, our kids see this every day. 
and it's just it's not fair that they continue to get overlooked it, it, they just they deserve more money for what they do and I, I just I wish other people could see exactly what they do every day um, they love their job that all of them uh, the ones that leave don't want to leave because they're like family um, I, I see it firsthand they it's like a family down there so the fact that a lot of the officers are leaving it, it's sad and and you know they they would take a bullet for each other and I mean you just it's sad they, they deserve more and that's all thank you CJ Do we have any more public comment? No more comments? Oh, there's more. Oh, I'm sorry. Brian, Brian, would you give us your name and address, please? Brian Williams. I live outside the city of Minden. Um, I came here tonight to show my support for the police department and hoping that they would, you know, the council would take it and have a workshop and look for money to provide a pay raise for them. Um, after listening to Officer Smith, Ms. Turner, and the rest of the folks out here, um, I felt led to come tell y'all something. A couple of years ago, I took a job here with the parish, left uh, the fire department's report, and Minden, I've been here all my life. Uh, and Minden has always been a safe community to live in. Uh, when I first took my new position over here with the parish, I responded one night to a school here in town, active shooter situation, what we thought. There were so many police officers there, and I have two daughters that go to school in this city, in the public system. With all the police officers there, thankfully it was not an active shooter situation, it was something else. Um, but I felt safe with my children there. As we've had police officers leave this city since that time, I know firsthand they're understaffed. And with the way things are going in the world today, if we had the same situation happen tomorrow, we would not have that kind of police presence that we had that night at the school. And I beg of this council to come together, pass a budget, I wish y'all would have tonight, with a workshop to discuss this. Yep. And I'll leave y'all with two questions. You probably won't answer. But the first one is for Mr. Yoakum, as a city attorney, to answer the question. I, I'm not an attorney, but I am pretty sure that Mr. Edwards' comment was correct, that you have a certain amount of time, you use 50% of your budget, and that's it. You cannot pay payroll. You can't pay insurance. I've been in public safety for 20 years. I run a fire district in this parish, and I know as soon as my budget starts, I lose a third of it with just insurance payments and annual payments that we make. I have the rest of the time to use the rest of it. So that puts this city in a predicament if you lose 50% of your budget right off the top. The second thing is for the council members that voted against the budget, and you know it's kind of out of order to ask you, but for me, the people out here and all the people watching on live TV or on Facebook is answer the question. I've had for a while that this, when this topic comes up, y'all do not vote for it. It's always against it, or we have council members leave out so the vote doesn't take place. My question is, is if you have an issue with something in the budget, why can't we get past that? Thank you. And thank you, Brian. Do we have any other public comments? There being no more public comments, we're going to go to council comments, and we're going to start with District A, Mr. Wayne Edwards. I have no comment about uh, discussion tonight. All of my views have been clearly stated 
uh, in both papers, in the journal and in the one that Bonnie Coverhouse produced. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Ms. Walker, District B. No comment. No comment from Ms. Walker. Comments from Mr. Bradford, District C. Yes, I'd like to congratulate uh, the Mendel Sweeties All Stars. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Bradford. And Mr. Roy, District D. First off, I'd like to apologize <clears throat> to the citizens of Minden because I don't feel that I have truly done as best as I can do by my comment on the audit. I should not have said that, but I, I guess where it comes from is a long list of frustrations. I've been working for several weeks with the police department and trying, and the fire department, trying to put together numbers on where to pull resources from to increase their salaries in both departments. You know, it, it's not an easy task, but we've got to figure this out. And so, yes, I, you know, I'm going to say things and do things I shouldn't do because I'm human, and I'm going to apologize for that up front right now. I'm only human. But this has gone on too long. The things that we're bickering about that I think we're bickering about because at one point in time you may never know what truly the bickering about is about. You know, um, we as a people elected Terry to run this city. Has he made some mistakes? Yes. We all have. But and some of the things I think that has stopped this council, in my opinion, from moving forward on a budget is because of some dollars that, in the whole scheme of things, is not important. You know, and that's a shame that we let that put us as a city in a situation to where we don't give the men and women that fight for us every day, day in and day out, the raise that they deserve. You know, again, I apologize for my frustration. I apologize for not doing more than I have done. And I, can, I will continue to try to find ways to bring more money to the men and women of the men in police department and the men in fire department. They deserve that. And I appreciate your patience I'm sorry that it's taking such a long time and such a, such a hurdle, but it's got to end. The differences have to end, you know. It shouldn't be about my district. It shouldn't be about their district. It should be about what's best for this city as a whole. And that's the way I've always tried to look at my decisions. So please, Please continue to pray for this city. And I'm going to ask one other thing, and I would ask the chief to step up and ask the sheriff to come in and help us patrol until we can get this rectified. You know, that needs to happen for everybody's sake. That's not the answer, only part of the solution. There's a number of, of, of answers to the solution. We've just got to put them together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Ms. Bloxham, District E. Yes, Mayor. First thing I want to say is to Stephen and his entire crew out at the airport, it was a wonderful event last Saturday, and we had so many families that came out to see the planes and the helicopters up close and personal. The weather was gorgeous, and it was another Chamber of Commerce day in Minden, and so many people that were there certainly enjoyed their time at the airport. Thank you again. Second point is I want to thank all the policemen and all of y'all's supporters for coming tonight. Uh, you've got my support, the firemen have my support, y'all have been my extended family for 20 years and there's no way that I'm gonna turn my back on you at this point. I do have a concern that we spent hours this summer in workshops to discussing this budget and y'all's pay never ever came up. That concerns me 
If you were united, why didn't we know about it when we were spending hours talking about next year's money? So I'm going to continue to work for you, and hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this and get some pay raises for you. But we really do need to keep this united and everybody be on the same page and know where it is that we, or what our focus is. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Bloxham. <clears throat> Mr. Yoakum, do you have a comment? Uh, first, I'd like to answer and clarify uh, for Mr. Williams and others the way the budget works. At the end of our fiscal year, which is in September, I'm not sure the exact date we end, um, if the budget goes unadopted, Mr. Edwards gave a correct assessment of the process. We start operating at a 50% budget. So if our budget last year was $100 for the year, that means once we spend 50 bucks, there's no more money to disperse. It doesn't necessarily mean everybody gets half a paycheck. It just means once we meet that halfway mark, $50 in that scenario, that there's no more money to be dispersed. At $50 and one cent, nobody gets paid. So it's a sudden stop uh, once we reach that, reach that amount, uh, which when we get to that point, or upon the discretion of the state, a little before, then we definitely will draw a legislative audit, which no one wants because that, that presents a whole other host of problems. Uh, so I wanted to explain that. Further to our officers, uh, I have a unique position to be able to work with them in, in the legal field, seeing trials, things of that nature. I conducted a trial a few months ago in front of a 12-person jury, and during jury selection, I had the opportunity to interview basically around 60 to 70 citizens of Webster Parish from all walks of life, every demographic, age, race, income, and I asked the question to each panel, could you rate the Menden Police Department on a scale from one to 10 based off what you've experienced and what you know? Overwhelmingly, they got 10 out of 10 or nine out of 10 from each and every demographic. As far as people on the streets, everyday people, people that sit on the jury of your peers that had a wonderful view. So, so to all of our officers, our men and women, uh, with the, the things with the council and, and, and the budget and all that, each of these council members are doing their best to represent their district, their beliefs, and I don't fault them for that. But I hope what you have seen tonight is what the citizens of Minden feel about you and of this area feel about you. And they support you 100% and they, they love you because you do a wonderful job. Uh, to our community and our citizens, as has been stated, please pray um, for these, le these leaders. They're all representing their district, their beliefs, their values, uh, to the best of their ability. We don't always know what is going on, just know that they're doing the best they can. Uh, but we as a community need to pray for our mayor, our council, our officers. And what we need to pray is for one word, and that's unity. And strive for one word, unity. Uh, we say a pledge of allegiance every time, and it says one nation under God. You can apply that same principle to one city, one Minden under God. And that's what we need, is to come together as one, be one community, be one, uh, one with each other, and find unity, and find common ground in all things. Uh, sure. So I love the city, I love our officers, and I love our citizens, and I just pray that we can find that in some way. Okay, I'm going to try to follow behind you, Mr. Yoakum. Uh, again, Ben and Sweeties, congratulations. Uh, I know you worked hard out there and, and your efforts. And you represented our city well and all the cities that you traveled. Uh, I'd also like to echo uh, Stephen, you and your five young adults from 17 to their mid-20s, <coughs> y'all did an amazing job uh, this weekend. Uh, it was very well attended and, and, and thank you for putting our our airport up on a pedestal there. If it wasn't for our airport, we wouldn't have places like Walmart and Tractor Supply and, and the new uh, uh, Burks that's opening up. So we, we appreciate the job that y'all do out there and how y'all represent our city. Uh, Yule Park, on September the 18th, we will have a re-grand opening of Yule Park. Uh, during the COVID, um, a lot of our recreation staff mostly to keep them on staff. They uh, completely remodeled the, uh, the park for us out there and painted the building inside and outside with new gutters and things like that. We took uh, some uh, donations to help us accomplish some things out there. And uh, I would like for y'all to come out on the 18th from uh, 10 to 2. I'll be out there cooking hot dogs and hamburgers and we're going to have B1 Bank out there. and. Uh, Several others have uh, donated door prizes. 
uh, I'm, I'm not going to name them all because I will forget who they are. Uh, from 2 till 6 that evening, we're going to have bingo inside and we're going to give away some amazing uh, prizes for bingo and our, uh, our grand prize will be a, a flat screen color TV. Uh, this is all done by donations, uh, no city funds at all. Uh, also, on, uh, we have uh, on, October, on October 30th, we have Trunk or Treat at the Recreation Complex, and they are taking uh, applications now or signing up for you to come out there and give away goodies and stuff to the, the kids. It would be an outside event. Uh, this is on October 30th. The phone number you can call to reserve your spot is 371-4241. Now to the police and fire. Um, me and two of the council members have looked. We've come through the budget. Like Ms. Bloxham said, we uh, had no idea that you wanted to raise to the, to the budget was finished. And now here we are today looking and, and I'm telling you, we're not uh, going to put this aside. We're going to look for a solution. I know the city might have problems somewhere, but my job as the mayor is to find a solution to what we need to do. Uh, our job as the city council is to find a solution and for all the city council members to come to these workshops concerning this. And it's important that the entire city council comes to these workshops so we can get everybody's idea. We need their ideas too and should they have solutions. Today I did a, a, a live Facebook post just to get an idea. I just wanted to get an idea of how the public felt. I know how y'all feel. I know how the fire department feels. I know how all those people feel out there in that lobby. But I wanted to see how the general public felt. People I don't know, you know, they might have voted for me, they might not have voted for me, but I wanted to see how they felt. So I put a live Facebook post out there. I'm sure you, most of you have seen it. My printer on my computer, all the emails that I've got today has been amazing. Out of all the uh, people that have called in, and some of, some of y'all have read the Facebook post as well, there's been hardly anything negative. You know, our citizens, our citizens have high utility bills. I know they're high, I have a high utility bill. The previous administration, I mean, you know, there's nothing we can do for another seven years. We have high utility bills. So it really surprised me that they were in agreement to put $4 on, on their utility bill. So this is one solution. There's several other solutions that I will share with everybody in, in the workshop that'll work. Uh, but then again, it, it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna have to pay for it. I mean, we need your services, you know, and, and guys, it's not if we need y'all. It's when we need y'all. You know, when our house catches on fire or when we make that phone call, we want you to show up. And I want y'all to stay unified. I appreciate y'all's family spirit down there. As a city, every department at this city is like a family. I don't ever refer to anybody as a team. They're not a team. I mean, I mean they're not an employee. We're a team. We're a team. It takes a whole city working together as a team to make this city what it is today. And we are the friendliest city in the South. You do not walk down our sidewalks that somebody does not speak to you. We are friendly. But our deal is if we have 5,000 police officers on the street, that's not going to stop our crime. That will not stop our crime. That will not stop our shootings. What's going to stop our shootings is the parents at home take control of their children and raise their children. That's what's going to keep the crime off the street. Do we need an ordinance? Absolutely we need an ordinance. 
So when the parents take responsibility or the grandparents take responsibility for their <coughs> children, we won't have a problem with nine and 10 year olds carrying a gun around on the street. The presence of the police officers driving up and down the street with the full police force, yes, that's gonna help and that's gonna make their response time quicker. But my job and our council job is to find a solution. I appreciate everybody coming tonight and the chief wants to say something. Now, I know everybody's ready to go home, but I, I wanted to respond to Ms. Blocks. And I've been here for 11 years. The first mayor I worked under, if I had raises on, uh, that, the first mayor would ask every department head to make a wish list, of what they needed during the year. And the first thing on my list every year while he was in office was pay raises. I would walk into that meeting and the words were said to me, if you got pay raises on your wish list, scratch them off. The second administration I worked under never said those words to me, but we fought, we butted heads real hard in reference to pay raises. I got beat down. I did get beat down. This year, this budget year, I got a phone call from a city employee that works upstairs and told me that y'all were having a workshop and department, departmental pay raises were on that list. So I went upstairs to the workshop and sat through the whole workshop and not a word was said about department, departmental raises. That's, that's, the, it, it, that's the reason I quit, I quit asking because I just, it was like button heads. And I just wanted to kind of explain that to you a little bit. Okay. Okay, appreciate it. Chief, I uh, uh, would like to say something. I don't know which budget workshop you missed, but departmental raises were discussed in several workshops. And all, all, all I can say is we are aware and we're gonna work towards doing something and we're gonna work towards a solution. But this administration was never asked for a raise. So I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll, I'll admit that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Your meeting adjourned.